That's how we look at it, right? <clears throat> so, first off, I want to say thank you to Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi. Um, for, for asking to see if I'd be willing to, to kick this Teen Talk series off. I said, absolutely. And I said, listen, I, I'm not sure I want to plan a formal presentation. Because at the end of the day, being the new guy, I, I feel like I need to give you guys some autonomy and some of the direction this conversation is going to go. Who am I? What am I about? What am I thinking? What questions do you guys have? Uh, but, but before we do that, anytime I meet with a group of kids, <clears throat> there's a couple things that I will always talk about. And it's either the formula for success, which is can I be trusted? Do I care about others and show it? And am I committed? Those are the three things I will always ask when it's a discipline situation, a classroom situation, or a, a situation that we're just trying to figure out what path you need to take. Right? Hey, you know, I'm not sure I want to take honors bio. Well, we'll we trust you to do your best in honors bio. Are you committed? And will you care about your teacher by showing it through your work? Or will you care about your, your peers by doing your part in the lab, whatever the case may be? The other thing, other two things that I always talk about, my teaching staff got Teach Like a Champion. How many people saw those signs in their classrooms? Anyone seen those? And a lot of that was about the power of the human connection. It wasn't about reading and writing and mathematics. It wasn't about academics. It was really about do you go above and beyond building that relationship with your kids? Because if your kids love you, they will run through a brick wall for you. They will do their work. They will be more successful. They will work very hard. And the last thing that I will always talk to a group of kids about is, is really the societal lies that are shoved down your throats. And then I use that very intentionally because as people, we get inundated with images, we get inundated with beliefs, we get inundated with philosophy. And a lot of times that philosophy, especially for kids, is you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not talented enough, you're not pretty or handsome enough, you just can't do it. And I'm here to say you are. You are smart enough, you are talented enough, you are handsome or good looking enough, you are, you have the ability innately within you. So that will be kind of my thrust into Homestead Falls High School. Everything we do, everything we focus on, everything we talk about will be teaching like a champion, but as students you're learning like a champion because it's a two-way street, my teachers are human. You gotta connect with them, you gotta love on them, you gotta support them, you gotta have their back. The formula for success, three questions, and then of course, you are good enough. You just gotta find that core belief. So that's kind of my philosophical view when working with kids. Now, I don't wanna get into my philosophy of education, um, which I, I believe in student-led learning, I believe in student-led decision-making. We, we will demonstrate that as the year unfolds. I wanna turn it over to you guys, because I'm new. And most of you are probably figuring out who the heck is he and how do I even say his last name? Because I've heard it 18 different ways. It's pretty simple. Spagnola. I get Spagnolia, I get all kinds of versions. Mr. Spaghetti, I did something that I accidentally said yesterday and I kind of looked and I laughed and the friends were like, well, did you just say that? And I'm like, yeah, it's good. Um, but if you haven't noticed a change, Open your eyes because we've gotten a little more structure in the building and that's healthy and that's good and that allows you to respond. So that's my intro. My background is I'm from Parma Senior High School, head, head football coach, athletic director, assistant principal, principal, taught for nine years. That's kind of me in a nutshell. Got a fabulous wife. Um, she's a lot better than I am in life, especially when it comes to parenting. So a lot of times I, I walk alongside her as best I can and I try not to screw it up at home, uh, which occasionally I do. Um, and then I have three wonderful kids. Isabella's in eighth grade, Silas is in uh, sixth grade, and Lucas is in seventh grade. So let me turn it over to you guys. Tony, is that okay? I'm not sure uh, what your thoughts are. And I'll do more of a formal <clears throat> later in the year. But let, it let me turn it over to you guys and really, you know, everything's fair at this table because really, T talks about you guys. So it's what's on your mind. What are you thinking? What do you even want to know about me? What are your thoughts? And so, the floor is yours. Any questions? Don't be shy. You go to North Homestead Friends Church, right? I do. All right. I, I don't make it as regularly as I probably should. Um, club soccer is, is yeah. an awful lot. Uh, my wife doesn't like to drive, so this weekend, you know, I was in Finley or Toledo, uh, Mansfield. Next weekend, I'm in Perrysburg. 
um, and then I'm in Lost Nation. Um, so I try to go. Usually I'm a 9.15 guy because I'm, I'm up in the morning. That's like sleeping. Yeah, my mom had her kids. I remember she was running the nursery. Okay. That's right. And what's your name? Uh, Colin. Hi, Colin. Hi, Mr. <laughs> yes. I have a question. What made you want to come to Olmsted Falls? Yeah, fantastic question. I wasn't out shopping myself. You go to Friends Church too, by the way, don't you? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I recognize you now that I'm looking. Um, I wasn't out looking for a job, guys, and, and I'm going to be pretty transparent. A couple years ago, Avon Lake called me where I live and said, "Hey, we're going to have an opening. We want you to apply. You want we want you to compete for it." And I said, "Thanks, but no thanks." Uh, they asked me then to sit on the interview as a community representative, which I did. Uh, when they were done with the interviews, they called me back and said, we don't like any of the finalists. Um, we're, we're, we really want you to come back in and just interview. If not, well, we're going to go to an interim. And I said, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, my work at Parma wasn't done. Plus, I, I still was feeling creative and, and moving. North Olmsted opened a year ago where I graduated high school. I didn't apply for that job. Nobody called me. They didn't, I guess they didn't want me. Um, <laughs> but when that job opened, it wasn't something I felt what was the right fit for me. But I knew for a long time. I, I came here a long time ago and presented uh, to the middle school. I did some work with those guys. Uh, coached against Olmsted Falls. Um, I, I like our style of kid, and, and, and I mean this in a compl complimentary way. We've got a mix of blue collar and white collar. We've got a gritty style kid that, that understands the value of hard work. We're a respectful community. The school system itself um, is a lot of the city pride, and, and that means a lot to me because we get to be a part of that. We get to help facilitate that. So when Olmsted Falls came open, um, I knew like heck I was going to compete for this job told this to my staff, I wasn't sure I'd be good enough. Um, and, and I still feel that way sometimes. So I'm just trying to figure out, am I good enough? Am I gonna be able to make a large enough impact? The answer is I hope yes, and, and we'll figure that out. Uh, but when it came to this job, without a doubt, like this was a no brainer. If I didn't get it, I would have walked back into the apartment senior high, I'd have been a happy man. Um, had a great staff, great group of kids over there. Uh, we had some challenges, it was a much different uh, uh, within the building we dealt with an awful lot I see Grace smiling uh, but at the end of the day it, it was Olmsted Falls or, or bust I was all in and, and I'm very blessed and thankful that they give me the opportunity if you're not any other questions come on Tony mm -hmm. all right what's your favorite type of pasta <laughs> my favorite type of pasta so I call it macaroni and meatballs first off Okay, I mean, you gotta understand, when, when we woke up for breakfast, and yes, breakfast, sometimes my mom will give us cold rigatoni, is what she called it, but we called it macaroni meatballs. But as I've gotten older, I, I've switched over to a cream, an Alfredo sauce. So, um, I, I like the, the, the chicken Alfredo with asparagus and sun-dried tomatoes. Um, sometimes I'll do chicken and shrimp if I'm feeling saucy. <coughs> um, so that's it right now. That's kind of my flavor. I do eat pasta a couple days a week, um, which is kind of good. We go to mom's every Sunday, or try to go to mom's still every Sunday. Family, family is important. What you don't know about me, uh, we grew up pretty poor. My my dad was in the steel mills um, in Pennsylvania. He got got laid off in the downturn of, of that time period. Uh, my brother, sister, and I shared a room. My grandmother was living with us. My parents converted the garage into their bedroom. It was a little two-bedroom house. But we never fell for it. Because why? Family was number one. Education was number two. And that's one thing my, my parents always instilled in all of us, which is fabulous. Our family, when we came to Ohio, my, my dad, after getting laid off, started working in a bar. Um, and if you have three little kids, that's hard. Um, and my mom finally was like, no, you, you got to get out of the bars. So he took a chance found a job selling copy machines uh, in, in Ohio and that, that's what that's what brought us here changed our lives because a lot of my cousins back in PA are still in that downturn cycle very few have gone to college and my, my sister's the head coach at Indiana softball Big Ten so you know she plays against Ohio State and those guys my brother is a, a top dog attorney at Dollar General and I'm a principal and, and so I attribute a lot of the three of our successes so my parents believe in two things, family number one, and then number two, uh, the value of an education. When I walked in that door, I sat down, my grandmother was 
having a beverage, because that's what she did, and a cigarette, because that's what she did, but I had to sit and do my homework before we did anything else, and that was the rule. And if I, I tried to fight that rule, I got it from my old man when he walked in at probably 3, 4 a.m. He'd wake us up and let us know that mom said you didn't want to do your homework, and that, that's, so it's just about that belief. So I, education's always been important to me and, and part of my life, so good question. What color is my toothbrush? So I have a Sonic, one of those. Nice. My, my dentist, a few years back, was like, it's time, like, you need to get a big boy toothbrush. I think those are exact words. And so I have a, a Sonic toothbrush request. Random, but, but good. Fair. Manic. Favorite board game, Monopoly, um, without a doubt. Yeah, it's not go. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I, I've seen them playing games during lunch, which is pretty cool. Monopoly was a, a good family time for us. Um, we would play marathon games, and sometimes they would they would take days. And when my sister and brother were in college, and I was still in high school, I loved when we were home for the holidays because we would always get together and play Monopoly. Let me ask you guys a question. What are your thoughts? Or what do you think Olmstead Falls High School needs to become about? What do I need to attack? Questions uh, it was, as we look at Olmstead Falls and we start to, to make decisions, I, you know, I, I had a uh, Kayla, uh, girls on the golf team, went out and met all the, the, the fall sports. She said, what changes are you bringing to Olmstead Falls High School? My answer was, I don't know. Because really, I don't know my kids yet, and I don't know my staff yet. So I, I flipped it back on her. I said, what changes do you think I need to make? And ironically, she wasn't sure. But let me ask you guys this question. What do you think we need to change at Olmstead Falls? I mean, some students' behavior in the classroom is not very ideal for a learning environment or a teaching environment. And, and if you haven't figured me out, I'm pretty big on structure. Are you feeling it in the hallways? Are you seeing it in, in class times? Our class parties are already down. Um, you know, we, we've told public, we've told you guys, get here on time. I don't care who you are. If you're late that third time and you're supposed to be in sports practice, you're going to be 47 minutes late. That, that's the name of the game. So we're going to hold everyone to that standard. In fairness to my staff, and, and, and I don't want to say anything negative, but in fairness to my staff, I, I don't think my staff felt supported with certain things in the past. Um, but I hope they now feel supported that if we got to hit someone between the eyes, and I mean that not literally, figuratively, but if we got to send a message, because at the end of the day, cell phones bother me in the classroom because they're disruptive. Behaviors that take away other people's education, I will always take seriously. You heard me on the microphone about vaping. You heard me on the microphone about bus issues. We will address it. We won't hide from it. I will call your parents. I was calling parents last night with a couple things that, that I didn't like in the building uh, yesterday. Didn't discipline, but just wanted to say, hey, here's a heads up. It's a behavior that's going to become a problem, and if it doesn't change, I'm going to have to change my approach. I'm just trying to get you to work with me. Talk to your son or daughter. And those were two phone calls I had yesterday before open house. Just minor things that I've seen and noticed that I'm like, we, it's time. Like Someone at home needs to support us. Um, so the answer hopefully is you'll see that as the staff feels supported, because I, they're only as good as us. And what I mean by us is, is Mr. Griffiths, Mr. Baker, and myself, supporting them to make those tough decisions. They, they got behaviors, try to resolve those behaviors, and my staff will do that in a caring, loving, and nurturing way. But there comes a time when it doesn't work, then we're going to have to go with a more severe concept. Fair enough? I think uh, for Olmstead Falls, I think uh, you spoke before about people feeling good enough. I think at the end of the day, everybody wants to be <laughs> acknowledged. Um, whether you're maybe a quiet kid walking in the halls, or whether you're someone who's working hard, or whether we talk about AAA athletics and arts and academics. And I know I've already seen you. You went to every fall sports team already. You went to the marching band. I've seen you post about Mrs. West's uh, art art room. Uh, you've been in my class four times already. Yes. <laughs> He's not counting. Uh, I am, because no principal's ever been in my room four times. Uh, and I appreciate that. I think that 
as a teacher, it shows that you're acknowledging me and what I do, and you care about what I do on a daily basis. And I think as a kid, I think you want that too. Like I was shy in high school. Like I just want someone to like recognize me for like the hard work I was putting in. Um, so I definitely see you being present, and I hope you continue that because I think that's something that Homestead Falls needs. You talk about you know what could be better, what could change, like being <coughs> present and then acknowledging people for the hard work that they put in. So yeah, so. Great, great point. Um, I, I'm not an office guy. My, my secretary's figuring that out. I, I'm realizing that the district will pull me out quite a bit, so I, I got to just continue to focus on on being that presence. Try to hit everybody's room. I will try to get in everyone's room at least for a couple minutes uh, one day a week. We'll start evaluations. That will make it a little harder. Um, I'm training my staff right now just to get used to me because I don't think the visibility might have been at the level of what I expect. I met with Mr. Baker and Mr. <coughs> Griffiths in my first meeting, and I, I'm gonna be transparent. Every bell period that rings said, I want you guys out in the hallway. And I said, if we're in a meeting, we're gonna get up and we're gonna go. Now, if I, there's times I'm on the phone with a parent, I got those types of situations where I might not be able to get out, but every bell period, I, I hear it and I, and I take off. Um, it gives me a chance to engage and interact, and then I try to hit classrooms as best I can. I know I've been in your room multiple times as well. Um, I, I think every staff member I've hit at least once or twice by now, if not four or five <laughs> times. Um, but my style and what, what I think you guys need to know, I'm not checking up on my teachers. I'm, I'm really trying to check in on my teachers. I'm here to help. Um, I'm not the smartest human being alive. Don't think of your principal being of this wicked smart guy that has all the answers. I don't. I will seek counsel on others and I will walk alongside people. So. Kids are going to help make decisions, staff are going to help make decisions, and through the collaborative process, I think we're going to mold old stead falls into whatever it needs to be. Another thing, kind of along yours and along yours, I told my two assistant principals, when an office referral comes in, go talk to the teacher before you process that discipline. You're going to get some insight, you're going to get some past practice, and then also sometimes a teacher, they're people. They just need a sounding board to say, ah, that moment, and like, let them vent, let them decompress, be there for them. They'll go back into their classroom feeling like, hey, I'm part of the process, I've been heard, and then we have the, the information we need to start recorrecting that behavior. But you will see me, you will hear me. I, I apologize, I'm loud. How many people figured out I'm pretty loud in the hallways? Um, that's okay, I'm not yelling at you, it's just my style, right? My, my friends growing up, um, once the North Olmstead head football coach, he would always say, I hated sitting at your dinner table because it felt like, hey, everyone was arguing all the time. And he's like, I swear your dad yelled at me more than my, my own parents. It's just our style, right? We're passionate people and, and, and we, we will love on you guys. Other questions for me? So we, we, I asked a change question. What do you guys think? Well, if there's one thing that you wish stopped today, like, what is it? <laughs> um, we need help in that. I mean, it, it's not just an Olmstead Falls issue, it's an issue of trust. At, at Parma Senior High, my first semester, uh, their last year we, we suspended 55 kids three days. <coughs> Second semester we got down to nine. So what I did is I, I said, the suspension's not working. It, 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 it is what it is. I think we're giving kids a vacation that want to be out of school. So we did two things. We worked with the university hospitals and we brought in an oncologist. So then we caught you, we put you in ISI that day, and then we gave you ISI the day that the oncologist came in. And they had to do, there was a two hour presentation, they had to do then a, a reflection work along with vaping. But here's what really motivated kids. And the reason it went from 55 to nine that I firmly believe, we worked with the city of Parma. And we, I had four police in the building more often than not. We caught you vaping in that moment, you got a $200 ticket for the city. And so, I don't know the political climate of my building yet, but I would like to do that. We've had one uh, so far, and, and I've told my guys, we got three male bathrooms, start checking them. I gotta figure out a way, I can't go into the female restrooms, right? That can be fired, that make it awkward. Um, so I don't wanna do that, um, but we gotta figure out a way. But we also need help with you guys. Sometimes, like I said, unless we know, unless we're told, we don't know. So if you hear it or you see it, 
we won't say, hey, Mandy came to me and, and you know, dogged on uh, and Grace and said Grace, you know, had vape pens. We'll just, you know, we'll play the game as best we can so that the person that is letting us know um, is never even brought up. But we, we need to attack it. I just don't know how um, every, every administrator that I've ever talked to, it's the same conversation. How, how do we get that? <coughs> You know, the cigarettes you can smell, you know, the old school marijuana you can smell, but the vaping is just, it's so ingenious for a marketing ploy to take advantage of a susceptible population that doesn't process the rationales of long-term decision making. And, and you know, they, the camel cigarettes, you guys remember those? They, they actually lost like lawsuits because they were appealing to kids with their logo. Um, but. I'm waiting for the Supreme Court to start going after the vape because it, it's labor. It's like, come on, what adult wants to smoke pot today? You know what I mean? And so we need to support you guys in that. If you guys have ideas on vaping, let me know. I want to conclude on this because I, I see you looking at the watch. When you're having those moments, reach out to my staff. Reach out to me. If you ever need anything, come find me. Um, I will, today I had a BLT department head meeting and I double booked myself, my mistake. But I told my secretary, kids first. So we're gonna reschedule my department head and my BLT meeting. And then I mean that. And so my department heads are probably happy that they didn't have a meeting. Uh, but we're gonna reschedule that meeting. At the end of the day, I wanted a chance to engage you guys. So if you ever need anything, find me. If you have any suggestions, find me. If you wanna talk about the media center, find Mrs. Graham. If you wanna talk about math, find these guys. I, we're here to help. And then if, if you re, learn anything today, know this. You're good enough, you're smart enough, you're talented enough. But when you're having that moment and you just need that shot in the arm, we're here to help. Thank you. Thank you. Hey,